grateful for what the Lord has done for us or what the Lord continues doing for us, for the gift of life, um, for the urge that he gives us that we are able to wake up every morning just to... Um, wake up and worship him and praise him and also wake up and um, encourage each other in our journey of faith. We can't take that for granted. Indeed, our God is good. He is faithful and um, we will continue um, asking him to guide us in this journey so that we can stay closer to him and um, Ask him to guide us in all our journeys, in all our plans, in all our preparations, in all our situations, because he indeed is um, faithful. And um, actually, this today is the last day of January. And um, it's a, a day to thank God and to just praise him for how he has um, been faithful to us, um, though us ourselves have not um, done the right thing most of the times, but he just continues like loving us and guiding us. And um, him having seen us through the first month of 2024, we can't take that for granted. We just continue to praise him. And as, as he has said, um, our first thing is to praise him. And in everything, we should praise him. And as I was thinking about this, and um, I came up, I read Psalm 103. And it is just a, a psalm of praising God. And I, I love when I start my day with just praising him. And just saying, God, I don't know what the day brings, but I'll just praise him, praise you in everything that I do and in everything that I experience and in everything that's going to happen to me. Yeah. So let's read um, Psalm 103 and you read from um, verse 1 to 11. Praise the Lord, I tell myself. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, I tell myself, and never forget the good things he has done for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He ransoms me from death and salutes me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like egos. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all those who treat, who are treated unfairly. He reveals his character to Moses and his deeds to the, Israel, to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to get angry and full of unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He has not punished me for all our sins. He has not punished us for all our sins, nor does he deal with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards us who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. And I just also wanted to read um, first. Um, 17. For the love of the Lord remains forever for those who, he, who fear him. His salvation extends to the children's children, for those who, who are faithful to his covenant and for those who obey his commandments. So he says, his salvation extends to the children's children. And that's our prayer this morning, that we are reminded of God's faithfulness and um, ourselves who strive to... Um, worship him and praise him in everything that we do. Let's just, before we go to uh, the prayers, let us just listen to the songs of worship that we have 
um, prepared for today. Thank you, Alice. Indeed, God, that's our prayer this morning. That's our testimony this morning. God, we come with humble hearts. Each and every one of us this morning comes with their needs and their prayers to you. This morning, I want to praise everybody's prayers onto your heart. I don't know what they are, but you do know them, God. You know, you know what each and every one of us needs. This morning, we come with humble hearts. First, we ask for your forgiveness for the sins that we have done, knowingly or unknowingly. Forgive us, God, so that our hearts can be truly be connected to you because you, we know you are a holy God and you also expect us to be holy. We are not able to be holy on our own, but by your guidance, Lord, and your Holy Spirit, Lord. We will keep asking you for your forgiveness and asking you to guide us so that our path may be as holy guided by you. So this morning, we ask for forgiveness so that when we do pray to you, when we ask for your guidance, God, our eyes, our inner eyes may be opened to your ways, Lord, because we know when we sin, when we have unforgiveness in us, then we cannot be able to truly hear what you have to say to us. So this morning we are confessing our sins. We are asking for forgiveness and we are asking us, we are asking you to guide us to open our eyes, our inner eyes, so that and our inner ears, so that we can listen to what you have to say to us. So so that we can know that in everything that we do, the first thing we have to do is to ask you for guidance. And indeed God you'll guide us. So this morning, we have asked for forgiveness. And we believe that you have forgiven us and that in all our situations, in all our problems, you'll guide us, you show us the way. You show us how to um, handle all the barriers and the hills and the curves and the bumps that we come across in our life, Lord. Because as you said, in this world, we'll have tribulations, but we shouldn't be worried because you, God, um, you won the battle. And even for us, we shall win. So guide us and help us in all the bumps, the varies, the tribulations that we'll come across. And we shall surely be winners at the end of it all. We ask you to um, help us so that in everything we may be able to worship you and praise you and to have faith, have that faith that allows us to believe that in all circumstances, guided by you, blessed by you, they will come to pass and uh, you'll have blessed us according to what you know that we need, God. God help us so that when we pray, we pray according to your will. We know sometimes we get overtaken by the things of this world and we diverge from what you yourself want for us. But God, this morning we want to ask you to guide us back to that path that you have chosen for us. Let us, our prayers, be in line with what your will is for us. And in that way, God, then they shall come to pass because we know your, your promises are yes and amen according to your will. Yes, God, guide us, help us, streamline our minds so that they are 
in line with what you have for us. And in that way, God, then we, we shall have peace. We shall have strength in what we have to handle in this world. God, you are a faithful God. We trust you. We trust you in everything that we are and in everything that we do. Sometimes we may look at situations and they may look overwhelming. They may look beyond us. But as we have listened to the song and as we have read in the Bible, you are a God of miracles and you do miracles for us. Sometimes we expect them to be big miracles, but the miracle is just how you help us to handle each day with a grateful heart, each day with peace and strength, even when things are overwhelming, even when situations are difficult. God, you are a faithful God, and you are a God who provides. And um, remind us of that every day, God. God, each of us, is every every one of us they have what you have chosen for them to do in this uh, world they have their purpose and sometimes our purpose keep on changing according to the phase that we are in our lives god continue opening our eyes to our purpose continue guiding us in what we need to do Help us so that in everything that we do, our purpose and what we are doing may be for your glory, Lord. Maybe, maybe to bring your honor and um, glory to your name. Align all our expectations, align all our plans, align everything that we do so that it may be for your glory. Let that be what we desire in our hearts, that whatever we are doing, it may not be to glorify ourselves, but it is to glorify you, God, because you know you are a generous God. But also because you are the owner of everything and you hold the whole earth, everything is yours. And we just want to Remember to give you glory and to honor you in everything that is happening and in everything that is there in our lives. God, some situations that we are going through are difficult and overwhelming. And sometimes we lose ourselves in, in this world. God, remind us to read your book. Remind us to use your word as guidance. And help us that when we think of things and when we do things, you give us strength if those, if those things are for your glory. And teach us, God, to know, to listen to that inner voice that you give us that is going to guide us and help us in every situation that you are in. God, we have seen your miracles. We have seen you working. And you know we know you'll continue working and you help us so that in all situations, before we do everything, we'll ask for you to guide us. And because as we have prayed that our plans may be aligned to your will for us, then indeed our prayers will be answered because they'll be according to your will. We offer ourselves to you, God. We offer our bodies and our situations as a sacrifice to you. Help us to do everything according to your will and for your glory. Continue guiding us. Continue being, be, being with us. And we thank you and glorify your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Over to you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Zipporah. Um, just, um, yeah, just uh, still on the note of faithfulness, I 
this verse came to me. Um, Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty to twenty two. Uh, let me scroll to. Uh. Yep. So Second Corinthians, uh, chapter one. Uh, verse 20 to 22. And it says, For all of God's promises, this is the New Living Translation, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a sound, resounding yes and through Christ our Amen ascends to God for His glory. It is God who enables us along with you to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installation that guarantees everything he has promised us. So what picks up my uh what sort of like catches my eye is that he has the the last part that says that he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our heart as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised us. First installment. It's always it's only the first. There's more to come, you know. It it it, it says usually installments. If you know about mortgages and other loans, first yes. Then after that, it goes like many many more years until you finish paying it up. And but you know, in this sense, that is <clears throat> the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of the other promises that's to come. That is the first one that He gives us, and there are more to come that He has guaranteed us. But He has given us this one. Um. Just so that, you know, when when we receive the first, we know more is to come. We come with expectation. Um, and, and the NIV version, I like in uh, verse 22, that says, uh, sorry, in, in the NIV version, uh, verse, um, verse 22 says, set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guarantee what is to come. So, you know, the Lord has set a seal of ownership. That means it's just identifying we belong to him. It's um you know a, a declaration that we are belong to God. We are not orphaned. We are not left alone to strive, but we belong to him and he put um his spirit in our in our heart. That is only the deposit, the down payment, you know, and that's uh and his guarantee more is to come, but the Holy Spirit is just the beginning of it. And you know, um, just as we're talking about, you know, um, yeah, on Monday, past uh, was it sorry on on Monday, Pastor Julian was mentioning about putting names on the altar, our family members' name, those who are going through a hard time, those that are needing a breakthrough, whether there are people who have rejected, you know, the the, the name of Jesus, who doesn't want him at all, or those people, um, whose heart are hardened or those who have tasted the goodness of the Lord and yet turned back. We want to put, you and I have the names of our loved ones. And so I want to come together to, you know, put put that name before. Uh, have that name. And if we, if we pray, may you present it, that name before the Lord. And we ask the Lord to touch their life. Uh, whether, you know, they have walked away for many years from the Lord, but the Lord can, you know, give a, a breakthrough. Just as um, during the conference, Pastor Julia and I uh, were just sharing a meal with a, a, a lady, uh, a lady who has turned away from the Lord and, and she embraced uh, Islam. And after 33 years, she came back to the Lord. So nothing is impossible. Our family member may have lost, they have known Jesus, but then they got lost in the, in the world. But it doesn't mean, you know, they can't come back. It's not a death sentence, but Lord gives, it's a Lord, a God of second chance. I want to present these names that you have before the Lord. So let's present it. Heavenly Father, we want to come before you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, of just as the songs that we heard, the promises that, you know, that say the storm may come, the winds may blow, but I remain steadfast, you know, I remain steadfast in you. And that Lord, um, we want to remind, remind, remind ourselves of your faithfulness. And Lord, you are God of ages. You are God of Abraham, uh, Jacob, and Isaac. 
you know, you are the same. Um, your love for us never changed. You know, the earth may pass away, but your word remains the same. You know, um, our life circumstances keep changing, but you remain faithful and true to us. Lord, you know um, our weaknesses, and Lord, you too know the desires of our heart. We want to put before the name of these people who are very dear to our heart. And Lord, we've been praying for their salvation. We've been praying for transformation in their heart. We've been praying that they may be breakthrough uh, in their hearts so that, Lord, they can uh, accept you uh, as their Lord and Savior. Uh, those, some of them may be lost. And we think that they are so lost in the world that there is no hope. But there is hope in Jesus Christ. I want to ask that, Lord, as we name this, present these names before you, you know that you will draw them back to you. And Lord, sometimes we as the closest part of the family member, it's hard for us to share. But Lord, nothing is difficult to you, for you. You will bring about people that surround, that comes into their life for a season. Lord, to speak life into them, to bring them close to you, to show them your goodness and to show them you are faithful. Back then, when they first know you, and even now, you are still waiting and you will not condemn despite how far they have gone in this world, how deep and how downtrodden they may be. But Lord, you will never reject them when they come back to you, when they say, sorry, sorry, daddy, we have, we have made the wrong decision and we want to ask that, Lord, you help. You will never turn them away, Lord. Can trust in you. Human hearts can be full of deceit and be helped because we want to gain something. But Lord, we know from you, your heart is sincere, your heart is pure. And Lord, you have set your children up for success. You have never set this, any of them up for failure. So you are God that provides all the best things for us. It's just that we have to be faithful. We need to submit to you. We know we want to obey to you. We ask that, Lord, the person that we have put before the altar, Lord, Lord, you do miracles that only you can do. Whatever we can do, we have done it. We have done our part. The rest, Lord, we present it before that you at this altar. And, Lord, you take over. You take over. Move us. Use us. When they, you want us to do something, help us to be tuned our ears and our eyes fixed on you so that we can do what you call us to do. The rest, we leave it to you. Because, Lord, we are not into the business and we don't have the capability to transform hearts, to convict hearts. Only you do. And that's your, that's what we leave it to you to do, Lord. Lord, we trust, just as how you build us up through our brokenness, how you brought us to you, close to you. Uh, you know, when we are, when we were lost in this world, the same, you can bring these few people back to you. And that, Lord, you do miracles in their life. Whether, regardless whether they are breakthrough in terms of uh, addiction, breakthrough in poverty, breakthrough in in diseases, physical, mental, or emotional, all this, Lord, you can, you can, you can speak into their life in their darkness, and you can. And we know, Lord, that Lord, when we are um, expecting a breakthrough, it is the hardest because we're at closer to the end of that race before we can receive our reward. And that's when we know that's the struggles. We put in our very best. We put all our strength and in it. And that Lord, we know the enemy also double up, triple up the the you know the the uh distraction, you know, because that that is the last battle. And Lord, we expect we expect our promises to be a yes and amen. And Lord, you have said so in your word that Lord. We, you, it's guaranteed, our promises is guaranteed, that is that we need to, we, our part is to obey you, to submit to you, to submit to your authority. So Lord, help us Lord, 
even though we don't see that breakthrough at this point of time. But Lord, we will be patient in waiting. It's just like us being a piece on that chessboard. And when you ask us to move one step, we will move. And the rest of the time, we wait upon you. We wait to hear from you. We worship you. We continue to talk to you each day and to be strengthened by your word, to be strengthened each and every day, to fill up, to build our inner strength, that we may be resilient, that we may be strong, and that we know the blueprint, the strategy, the strategy that you want us to take, to conquer, to receive, in order to receive our, our breakthrough, our reward, whatever that may be. Maybe a reward, you know, for... Uh, a breakthrough for a for a job, a breakthrough for um even housing situation, a breakthrough for um those health wise, Lord, you are in it, you love us, and it's never in you know it, it's it's never in your interest for us to suffer um and um you know to 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 live in poverty, you are you have everything. You know, and we are your children, and we will in, we have your inheritance. Therefore, Lord, we trust in you for this inheritance. We trust in you for all the promises that you put in our. You have said we will receive. We still believe it. We don't see it at this point of time. Some of us are still struggling. The one multiple. The race is still on. As long as we will have breath, we will continue to praise the Lord. As long as we have our health, we continue to serve Him faithfully in all that He has called us to do. Regardless whether it's just serving a cup of water to your guest speaker, you know, in church. Regardless, it's just, you know, um, vacuuming, you know, or sweeping the, the floor. You know, the small things, even the big things, hosting a speaker, a, 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 you know, a, a a minister in your house for a meal or, or you know, for, for someone who's traveled afar to, to share the word, you're giving a housing to the, to the minister, big or small, the Lord knows what, you know, and, and the Lord um, is just fulfilled for obey what the Lord has asked you. Every step may not make sense. Our, the ways of our, our way we think may not make sense, but Lord, we just trust in you because your ways are higher than ours. And we don't want to put you in a box. We don't want to, um, we 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 don't want to, um. We don't want to be God. We don't want to dictate what you should do, and we don't want to dictate how you should, uh, how you should run our life. But Lord, as a surrendered person, as a child of God, we listen to your instruction. We obey you. We follow what you have to say, Lord. Give us that heart of humility, the heart of obedience to say yes, Lord, whenever you call us to do something and not just every time asking why and not asking, Lord, if you let, if you, I do this for you, then you will have to give me this. That's not the relationship we have with the Lord. We have a trusted relationship with Him that we will do because we do it out of love. God has not withhold anything from us. Therefore, we don't you know, we, we don't withhold anything from Him to serving the Lord, obeying Him, submitting to His authority is the way we can show love to Him. So Lord, help us break that 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 spirit of rebellion in each and every one of us. We have the tendency to rebel. That is in us, I know, even in myself, I do. A lot of times I ask, why Lord? Why do I have to do this for you? You know, why Lord? Lord, break that. But instead we say, yes, Lord. I want to do this because I love you. I love you so therefore I want to do this. You ask me to do this. Yes, I will. And Lord, help us, Lord, to continue to tap onto your wisdom. The ways of the world are, are nothing new to you. It may be a difficult for me to understand, but it's nothing new for you, for you. So therefore, help us to tap into your 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 heart. Tap into your wisdom to know how to navigate, uh, you know, if we need uh, the ways of the world. And help us to trust that Lord, whatever it is, we may not see that promise now, but you are faithful. You are faithful and it will come. We stand and we believe and we pray as if we have received. Yes, Lord, we thank you for this promise. We have received it. We thank you for this uh, job. 
you know, that you have shown, opened the door for us. We are waiting for it, but yet we can thank God. Thank you, Lord, that I receive it in the name of Jesus. I receive healing in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I will continue to serve you regardless what it is. I receive healing and I will serve you all the days of my life. And we say it each and every day. Thank you, Lord. A heart of gratitude. A heart of gratitude is what we need. And we speak it out because the enemy is afraid. The enemy is fearful. Each time we give testimony, each time we share the goodness of the Lord, we speak out, the enemy is fearful because that is a weapon against the enemy. The enemy wants to put us down, but no, we say the Lord is victorious and I am under the wings of the Lord and therefore I am victorious. I soar above my struggles. I soar above my challenges and I am victorious because Christ Jesus is victorious. He has overcome death and so I have overcome all sorts of struggles, challenges in workplace, at home, you know, in relationship, all this in the name of Jesus, I receive victory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your promise to us, which is not, which, which never, will never be taken away from us as long as we stay faithful and we stay on the path with you. You are the one that will deliver us. You are the one that will journey with us. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit in us. And that Holy Spirit is such precious, Lord. So, Lord, help us to appreciate and Lord, to connect to you. And Lord, help us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you. Over to you, Pastor Julian. And David would sing and say, Lord, in return to all your goodness to me, what can I ever give back, Lord? For all your goodness over our lives, your faithfulness, oh God, for every answered prayer and for your encouragement, inspirations, Lord, in the inside of us. When the enemy would have crushed us, oh God, you came through, Lord God, and you manifested your power and your strength, your grace and your mercy, your love, which endures forever, my God. You released it and rested it upon us, oh my Father. And indeed, we saw your head over our lives. What can we ever give back to you in return to what is our God? What is it, Lord, that we have that you desire of us, oh God? In return to your goodness over our lives, oh God, we just ask because at times we don't know. We look aloud and we find, Lord, we have nothing that we can give you back to acknowledge and appreciate what you do for us and what you've done for us, oh God. But we don't blame ourselves because we find David also found himself in the situations that we are in right now. He watched and he saw the deliverances that you have done upon his life. He saw your goodness over his life. And Lord, he sang out aloud and clear and he asked, what can I ever give to a good and a faithful God like this that I have? Oh God, it is the question that is going on around us even right now, Lord. For we have seen you deliver us, oh Father. We've seen you stand with us, standing with us, oh God. Yes, Lord, you have stood with us. When nothing else stood alongside us and nobody else maybe stood alongside us. But God, you never left us. You stood by our side. And here we are, oh God, we want to thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness over our lives. What can we ever give you back, Lord? This sacrifice this morning we bring before you of a prayer and I bring before you is not enough. This is not enough, oh God. But what can we give you, Lord God? And David would sing and say that I'll lift up this cup of salvation and I'll declare the goodness of the Lord to all that will be around me and to wherever I can, I will lift up the cup of salvation. And Lord God Almighty, that many will know that there is one that I love and that I worship. That's our prayer this morning, oh God. That through it all, that Lord, we may just worship you for who you are. There is nothing in our hands. Our money, Lord God Almighty, you don't desire because that same money you've given it to us. Our houses, Lord, you don't desire. You gave them to us, oh God. Our cattle and our sheep, Lord God, you do not desire because you gave them to us, oh God. 
Everything, Lord God Almighty, the Bible says that you own it all, you created it all. You do not desire that for us to give you back, oh God. But a broken and a contrite spirit, that, Lord, you will not deny. That you will not deny. It's our prayer this morning, Father, that we may find a place in your heart this morning with an open heart before you, Lord, we stand with a song of worship in our hearts. And with thanksgiving, Lord, we come to say that you carried us through, Lord, and we are here. We thank you. Indeed, your faithfulness has been tangible in our lives, Lord. We thank you for every testimony, for every word of encouragement, for every word of strength that, Lord, you have rested upon us. Lord, <laughs> many a time, Lord, you have truly, I believe this is all of us, Lord, how I have woken up broken every day that I rose up, Lord, even to come and to pour my heart out before you, how broken I was as I came. But every day I came, I never went back the same, Lord. It was your way of encouraging me, lifting me up, my Lord, just rising up and coming before you, before the throne of my God. We want to thank you for the encouragement that has been going on and on and on and on through your throne. Lord God, we thank you upon all of us. We thank you, Lord. Indeed, you have been faithful. You are faithful. And for every testimony and miracles and signs and wonders that you have done in our midst, Lord, we declare that they are permanent. Lord, what you have done is permanent in our lives. It is permanent. What you do for us, my God, nobody can take it away for us. No one can take it away for us. The miracles you have performed in our midst, Lord, they remain permanent, oh God. Your touch over our lives remains permanent, my Father. We have tasted you and we have seen and declare that you are good, oh God. And now we know and declare that that environment you have brought us into. We cannot move back away from you, my Lord. It is permanent. It is seen in the blood of Jesus. Lord, we have come in and here we shall remain. Lord, we thank you for every word of encouragement that you have rested upon us. We thank you for every action, for breakthroughs, for miracles, for, for provisions, oh God, for, 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 for taking away darkness round about our lives and releasing your light over our lives, our our God, it is permanent, Lord. Your light is permanent. When it draws upon our heart, it is permanent. We declare here that no powers of hell can intercept us anymore. No powers of hell can intercept our lives anymore. Our God, it is permanent. Your light is permanent. Your word is permanent. Your word is permanent. Your word is eternal. Your word is from beginning to everlasting and to everlasting. My God, when you do and you perfect no one can take it away from us, Lord. We come to say thank you, Jehovah, King of glory. You have done us well, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. It is permanent. And the many other things that you are coming to do, Lord, we are faithful. We are waiting. We are sitting here. And we know as you have done it, you will do it for one more. My God, we pray this morning. Father, thank you for the testimonies of your people. Oh, God, we come back to say thank you, Lord. We come back together to say you've done it in our midst. We can see it and we say thank you. We are reminded of this one leper who would come back to say thank you. And at that point, you said to him, go well, your faith has made you well. You perfected it, Lord. We come back, Lord. So you have perfected it. You have made it permanent. Lord, at this point, we say, yes, Lord. We're seeing all these great things you have done in our midst into your able hearts, Lord. And as Paul, Apostle Paul would teach us and would say, in the book of Philippians, I'm just going to go there and read one scripture in the book of Philippians and verse number, chapter number four. The book of Philippians, chapter number four. I'm going to read just one portion of our scripture there and verse number six. Let me start from verse number four. We know them. And Apostle Paul would say, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, 
by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That is what Apostle Paul would tell us. That is why we are coming back here to tell the Father, thank you for what you have done for us. Because he tells us all what we have to do is to take any anxiety around the surrounding situations that are allowed us. We can do that by prayer, prayer free, bringing prayer free our needs, our requests before God. As we have come, every day we rise, every day we go to our physical gatherings and pour our hearts out to the Lord. Every time we meet and we gather, the, I, I laugh when Apostle Paul speaks over and over again in the Gospels, and he says, over and over he says that I long for the day I will come and be with you. I long for the day that I'll come and be with you and impart on you the faith that I have so that you can also receive that faith and that faith can be with you. But he also, so when he speaks, he speaks from my heart and I believe the Holy Spirit is encouraging someone here that that spirit of Apostle Paul, that spirit of God that was upon Apostle Paul, the spirit of Christ, which he talks about just a few chapters behind in this book we are reading right now he says that do not be anxious about anything but in every situation every one of them every one of them may the lord god almighty help us this morning every situation by prayer and petition because they are those prayers whereby the enemy or things around us will come and steal from us what belongs to us right free. That is the time you're going to petition before the Lord. You're going to petition before the Lord. What is right for you as sometimes and many a time the enemy will creep in. The Bible says that he comes in like a thief. He is a thief. He comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. And in those moments, they are when we shall come to petition. To petition what belongs to us has been taken away, has been taken taken away our children, our inheritance, our blessings, which the enemy knows that they are our blessings. But anyhow, he still takes them away. He still grabs them. But the spirit of the living God says, do not be anxious about anything, but prayer free. Come before the Lord. Present your request and a petition before God. Because child of God, there is what you know belongs to you. But the enemy doesn't let you look like it's yours. He has, he has torn it away. It is your moment to petition bring your petitions apostle paul who is the spirit of the living god this morning says bring your petitions before god bring your petitions come and present your petitions and lord this morning we come lord god indeed truly we are not anxious and we are asking that your strength within us shall be strong, that will draw away any anxiety around the hard situations around our lives right now, oh God. And we present your, your word right now, Lord God, that gives us the ability to present all our situations, all our petitions, all our prayers, all our requests, oh God. And the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, you will send a word. You will send a standard that gains him, oh God. For last word is to come the way we have come this morning. We are paralyzing this morning. Every effort of the enemy round about us in any way that has intercepted and has continued to cause havoc in our lives. Now by petition, Lord, we are declaring what you have given us is permanent. Your blessings of our lives are permanent. They are real. You've given us life. Life comes from you. Psalm 127 says that children are a blessing and inheritance, a reward from the Lord. Life is a reward from the Lord. We are standing here, Lord God Almighty, to declare that that same life you gave us is valuable and is suitable for us, oh God. If anything speaks otherwise in our lives right now, we bring our petitions before you, O oh God, and we start with your word that you give us life. Life and life only. But there is one who comes to steal and has stolen from us, O oh God. This morning we present our petitions. We crave back what belongs to us. We crave back our children. We crave back them that haven't received the light of God. We receive and crave their lives back to you. We present them at the altar this morning. We lay them at the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus and we petition for them, oh God, that you give them life. If you could give them life, what else wouldn't you give them, Lord? 
You died on their behalf. Gave your life on their behalf. That is permanent, oh God. That can never change. But Lord, one has come and stolen from us. And so this morning we bring our petitions, oh God, and declare your word is true. Your word is still true even now. And where the enemy has brought confusion in the lives of our dear young ones, and even us mothers and fathers, oh God, that have lost the way, cannot see the way, their darkness has crept in from the enemy. Darkness is from the pit of hell has crept in over the minds of our people and our young ones, oh God, over the church even today, oh God. We bring our petitions, oh Father, and declare that life is only from you. Only you gives life. No one can take away life when you give it, oh God. We distance ourselves from every affairs of the enemy that come to power and to bring back that darkness over our people. We break those yokes right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak life in our situations and over our people and declare that your life is permanent for us. You gave it, we received it. It remains so. So, Father, this morning, wherever there have been interferences from the kingdom of the enemy, that's why we are here this morning, oh God. And in obedience to your word, the word of the Spirit this morning, by prayer and potation and with thanksgiving, we present our request to you this morning, oh God. And we lay our loved ones on your altar by name. And I believe you are mentioning them by name as you know them. And this morning we are leaving, we are releasing them onto the altar of our Lord Jesus. We are committing them onto the life of our Lord Jesus. As he gave his sacrifice, it was for them and for us. And so this morning for us is to mention their names and to lay them at the altar. This altar is alive. This altar is our Lord Jesus. He is not in the grave. He is alive. Seated at the right hand side of the Father. Listening to the petitions of his people. His brothers and his sister. We are coerced together with him. He is seated at the place of authority. Interceding for the saints. And this morning as we raise our petitions. He takes them over. And he carries them through to the Father. Our petitions before God this morning, for our dear loved ones who are the home, confusion has crept in and it caused a delay, a confusion. A, we don't know how to describe it, but God, we know this is not of you. This morning we petition on their behalf, present them to you, Jesus, as you sit at the place of your authority. Today, by faith, we release them unto you. We lay them at your altar, oh God unto you. We mentioned Mary, John, Philip, Catherine, Jane, Frederick, Moses. I am mentioning names at random because they are the names of the people that we know. I am mentioning names at random, but in my spirit, they are names that I have. And you too, they are names that you have. Present them to the altar this morning as we do together. Out your altar, oh God, the names of our people, the names of the church of Christ that you came to die for. We bring them back to you and petition on their behalf. You gave them life, died for them. They are alive right now. And we declare anything that is not of life is taken away from them. And they shall rise back to life. They shall rise back to life. Jesus, as you rose from the dead, that same, same power that lifted you from the dead, lifted you from the dead, that is the altar we are talking about. And unto you, oh God, the same power that lifted you today lifts our people, lifts us up ourselves. We, 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 Lord, on the same altar, the altar that lifted you, Lord God, you are not in the grave. You are alive to intercede, to intercept those works of evil that you, you intercepted was permanent. You intercepted them permanently, permanently. Your sacrifice was permanent. It was sealed once and for all. For us today is to bring that petition because it was once and for all and to say that your sacrifice was permanent. 
Your life over us is permanent. Your blessings over us are permanent. Your reward for us are permanent. Permanent was sealed. And this morning we present us before you, O God, and rise to say by faith that what seemed like not life, things will start to turn around when we activate the power of the sacrifice and speak it out this morning. Your sacrifice, oh God, was not in vain, but was to bring us back to life. And so this morning, we commit our sons and our daughters before your sacrifice in the name of Jesus. And we declare, as you rose up, they rise up. You rose up with us, oh God. They also rise up, oh God. And because that is life, which is precious before you, that life is preserved. That life is valuable. That life you came to see it and you died for. We present them to you, oh God. We speak salvation. We speak the light of God. Them that have, uh, that have been darkened by the things of this world, where the enemy has come and lied to them, where the enemy has crept in, we denounce every, we denounce every traces of darkness that have been sent from the underneath the seas, from the air, from wherever, powers of evil, powers of darkness sent upon our lives to cause confusion, to cause chaos in our children, in our own lives, ourselves, to bring confusion, to bring doubt in our lives that we are rising against, we are petitioning and bringing the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus to be alive and permanent. It was once and for all and defeated every powers of hell. And this morning, we are here petitioning, declaring that your sacrifice was permanent, Jesus. And so, our study today, our position today in you, Christ Jesus, is permanent. It is sealed. We are saved. We are whole. We are complete in the name of Jesus, delivered from all powers of hell. Our families are delivered. We study the gap as we present them before you and declare that your sacrifice for us and for them was permanent, sealed with your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we have presented our request to you, O oh God. Father, we believe in your word. We believe in your power. We are here because you have brought us, O oh God. You will take us further. We are delivered because you delivered us those more than 2,000 years ago, we were delivered. We activate that word. We activate that sacrifice to be alive even right now, to be speaking even right now, active even right now, at work even right now, delivering right now, bringing back captives even right now, in the name of Jesus, releasing diseases and the sickness even right now, in the name of Jesus. That sacrifice is the same as it was, as it spoke, as it represented us, as the same even today, over us living in our day, over Julia like now, and all of us, every one of us, by name, that sacrifice was for us for this day, that we shall not be tormented by the powers of hell, but we shall know what belongs to us, we shall bring it to life, we shall stand on it, we shall claim it, we shall declare it over us and our generations, and nothing can change that, it is permanent, it was done, thank you Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor. It is permanent. We stand on, our, on your word. We stand on your promises in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We thank you. We have presented our request to you. We shall continue to do so. It is because we have faith in you, because you have shown us what you can do. Lord, we trust you more, and we shall come out more in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And glory to God, back to you, Alice, to conclude in the name of Jesus. Sorry, two minutes gone. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Lord, for, for speaking to us. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you, you know, for the assurance of your promise. So, Lord, as we close on, um, we will just say the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Um, God bless you all and come back again um, same time on the Friday. And um, the Lord is with you um, then.
Be blessed you and keep you safe. Thank you, everyone.